All right, what's up, everybody? It is Sunday. My New York Giants put up a good fight, but ultimately lost. And a lot of you guys liked Five Lesson Friday, so I'll do a Seven Lesson Sunday video. Why not? Let's do it. So here are some basic lessons. Number one, keep track of multi-month and multi-year breakouts. Uh, there's only a few stocks right now that fit this, but you need to watch them like a hawk because they are right at key points and they can really break out. Uh, for example, JRJC, it's been uh, spiking here on the back of good earnings. You know, they're kind of a, a sketchy, questionable Chinese company. But it's right at the resistance zone here, around 630, 640. You know, it's had some spikes up to the 8s, 9s, and 10s before. But the question, real question is, can it break this mid-6 zone? And it's hanging around here. The longer it hangs around, the more likely it is. But you have to watch out. You have to understand that this company might not hold it. Uh, if you remember ERII, um, they, were, they had good, good news, big contract. And they had a big breakout over 775. They went to 9 plus for about a day and then they failed. They're in the wrong industry, uh, energy and oil, you know, so it's tough. JRJC, I don't know if it's going to hold it. You know, I'm watching it, but I have no position. Uh, much more exciting for me is TXMD, which is holding above this key resistance at 9 ish. It's been a little choppy, but I've been dip buying it, I don't know, half a dozen times. Uh, selling for 10, 20, 30 cents a share of profits each time because there hasn't been the big follow-up breakout. But it is holding in a very ugly market. So this one, I really wouldn't be surprised to see to go to 10 uh, this week. So this is still a potential buy for me. As long as it holds above this, you know, 889-ish uh, multi-year resistance. And then my, my pick, MITK, which I was buying it on the multi-week, multi-month breakout here in the low fours. Went all the way up to the fives, and now we're right back down here. Um, it's, you know, I don't know if it's going to hold it. It's it's close. You know, I've been dip buying it lately. Um, I have a long position right now, but I like this kind of a chart where it tried, what what was it? Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. On the seventh time, it finally broke this multi-month breakout, and now here we are, uh, you know, at the same level. So I've been dip buying this. Watch it closely in the low fours to see if it can bounce. That is lesson number one. Number two, respect first down days on pumps like WNDW. If you remember my watch list, you know, this has been a potential short for me all week. Um, I didn't pull the trigger. You know, I, I guess I should have because it's the first down day. Uh, but this thing is up from three all the way to the fives, and now it's mid-range in the fours over the past 10 days. But if you go back over the past 20 days, it's really up from the twos. You know, first down day on Friday, is this the beginning of the end? Uh, quite possibly, you know. Uh, I'm scared to short this kind of a chart. Um, I'll tell you that. This reminds me of AVXL. Um, a lot of people were too short, too too quick to be short on that. Um, but the first down day, you know, led to, here it turned out to be, well, I guess it dropped for like two days after. Here it turned out to be the beginning of the end for several months. And now the question is, is, the, is this the beginning of the end? And my guess is yes. So this is a potential short, but just be careful. Uh, it's not guaranteed and it very well could come back. Uh, number three, utilize holiday sales to save money. This is rather obvious, but I just had this blog post today, the best holiday gifts this year. Um, the price on my various newsletters is going up next year because frankly, I have more millionaire students than anybody. And a lot of people are joining because they want to be millionaires, but they're joining for the wrong reasons. Uh, they just want hot stock picks. They don't think they have to watch a lot of video lessons. They're just like, yeah, yeah, I'll study when I make money. That's not how it works. You know, this is kind of like medical school. You don't start operating on patients before you graduate medical school. You study, study, study so that you can be prepared for the operation. And you have to think kind of similar where, you know, every single trade is an operation. And if you're not fully prepared ahead of time, if you haven't studied ahead of time, your patient is going to die, namely your account. And that's why 90% plus of traders lose money because they're not fully prepared. So we're raising prices in 2016, just a little bit. We're adding all sorts of new features. I'll get into that later. But you have an opportunity to save right now. Um, we have all these DVDs on sale. These DVDs don't go up in price, but these are 50%, 70% off. These newsletters, uh, two of my newsletters, Tim Alerts and Penny Stocking Silver, will be rising. 
uh, next year. So you have just a few days to lock in these sale prices that will never be seen again. And then we also have all sorts of other newsletters. Uh, Superman has had a fantastic year uh, making over a million dollars in profits and Triforce Trader is the newest uh, millionaire trader. So this is a great lesson. You know, use holiday sales. Uh, it's the exact same product whether you buy it now or whether you buy it a month from now. And sadly, too many of you guys will be like, ah, you know, I'm just going to watch a few free videos on YouTube and maybe I'll understand it. And you're hurting your education. You're hurting your opportunity. You're hurting your potential. So utilize these holiday sales, save money, and get in the game. Be fully prepared. Uh, number four, respect big – and I'll post the links underneath this video too. Um, or you just look on my Twitter. Number four, respect big earnings spikes. Look to buy the dips. RLOC was the biggest earnings winner on Friday. Huge, huge, huge morning spike from the low ones to the low twos. Um, and it came down, and it was a pretty good dip buy here in the 160s, 170s. I got some uh, in the 180s, so I didn't get uh, you know a, a perfect – or actually, I did get the 170s, 170s and 180s. Um, I didn't get a perfect bottom, but – I'm not worried about trying to pick the perfect bottom. You know, sometimes you get this morning spike and then it just keeps coming down um, and, and it never bounces. With this one, you know, you, you have solid support here at 160 and then solid support here in the 160s and now it's uptrending. This reminds me of Ford. Uh, if you remember, Ford eventually lost all of its gains or most of them, but it had a big morning spike uh, here, actually went from like one to the fours. And then the next day, even though it finished red, uh, you know, this chart doesn't show pre-market. Pre-market, it was trading in the twos um, from, I dip bought it in the 120s, 130s. Um, so these things can bounce, and then a few weeks later, they bounce. So I love these low float earning spikes. Don't chase them. Only look to buy them on dips, and then the goal is to sell into follow-up spikes. Never thinking that this is like a long-term hold. All I'm trying to do is make 10, 20, sometimes 30% on uh, Ford. I actually made nearly 100%, which was kind of crazy. Uh, number five, know where we are in the overall market cycle. Uh, this is very important. A lot of people don't realize three out of four stocks follow the market. And, you know, we're trading penny stocks, so it's not an exact comparison. But, you know, we've been uptrending for a while, and now we have kind of like this triple top in place uh, on the NASDAQ, and we're, we're kind of breaking this low um, in the S&P, you know, kind of a triple top, and now we're breaking this recent range lows. Uh, I know that you want the Santa Claus rally. I know that the last two weeks of the year, or I know it, I don't know if you know it, but theoretically the last two weeks of the year are the most bullish. Um, I just don't know anymore. You know, we're so late in this market run up. Uh, we've been running up for seven years now, and now we have some, some definitive, you know, kind of just breaking, cracking action where you had the panic. Uh, you know, if you look at, pumps i'm not saying that the market is a pump but if you look at pumps they usually have this kind of panic before they eventually crack uh avxl very similar um and i'm not making the complete comparison here but you know before this well i mean it's still in the bounce mode but you had a big crash and now it's in the bounce mode this probably will keep coming down although this bounce is considerable what's a what's a better one uh ipow did that have a now that just kept coming down. Oh, I'm looking bad here. I'm looking bad. Okay, here we go. So EURI had the crash and then a little bounce and then a follow-up crash. Um, and, you know, again, I'm comparing the overall market to individual blatant pump and dumps. So it's not anywhere near an exact comparison. But when you do look for a market top, uh, you usually see, you know, a, a kind of panic before the eventual big drop. And obviously, you know, this is a perfect W, so a lot of bulls will say, hey, this is a double bottom, this is this is very bullish. But we're seven years into this bull market. Um, you know, it, it's just tough for it to keep going. And I recognize that. So I'm not saying that the bear market is definitely coming. I stay away from overall market predictions. All I'm saying is be careful on your longs. And I said this Friday morning. Uh, when the Dow was down, what, like 150 before the losses doubled. So I'm always careful, and that's probably part of the reason why I was up nearly 200% this year in a slightly down market. Uh, number six, be willing to go short or sit in all cash when necessary. A lot of you guys 
want to trade every day, you want your money working for you, uh, you know, you, you feel lost or helpless if your money's not doing something, sometimes the best trade is no trade. And that's very tough to accept. Um, next year, you know, I'll be trading with just $12,000. Um, so I'll be under the pattern day trader rule. I'm basically checking myself into trader prison. Uh, so I won't be trading as much. And I'm excited because that's going to force me to really consider every trade much more. Uh, it's going to force me to have more patience. Sometimes, you know, I'm really going to focus on trying to hold a stock overnight as opposed to this year where, you know, I've had a good year, but my impatience got the best of me. Last year, I actually had my best trading year ever. Um, so next year, I'm excited. and you have to be willing to go short. You know, this isn't a market where you just have to be bullish. You know, Merrill Lynch, where their slogan was be bullish, they went bankrupt. Okay, so being bullish on Wall Street, yes, it works in a bull market, but it gets crushed in a bear market or like in the market that we're currently in. Um, so just be agile. You know, that's the beauty of trading. Uh, I know a lot of value investors disagree. A lot of mutual fund holders disagree. For me, and for my top students, the way that we've made our money, you know, is really being agile and being able to go both ways, long or short. And number seven is probably the most important lesson of the day. Um, understand that preparation every night before is the key to your success. Uh, a lot of people won't even watch this video on Sunday. They won't watch uh, or look at my watch list that I'm going to send out in, in a little bit. Uh, tonight and they're just going to come to the market fresh maybe like 9 25 a.m eastern five minutes before the market open and they're going to be like what's hot what's moving and they're just going to want to buy something because that's how a lot of traders think uh, sadly they don't prepare ahead of time their mindset is off their their strategy is off and that's why the vast majority of traders lose it's not random uh, there are very specific reasons why you lose. You know, if you don't cut losses quickly, if you use too much leverage, if you don't focus on volatile stocks, if you don't learn about what catalysts move stocks, if you're not prepared for, you know, upcoming uh, events. Like if a company is reporting earnings, you know, the next day, you shouldn't necessarily be in that stock. So preparation and being meticulous are key to my success and they're key to your success. Uh, and I know a lot of you don't believe me. You don't want to put in the time and effort to prepare ahead of time. I'm not giving like these amazing, amazingly fun tips here. Like it's hard work and it's frustrating. And even if you do prepare, you're not guaranteed success, but it increases your odds. And as a trader, all you can do is, you know, do whatever you can to increase your odds of success every single day and preparing and studying the night before increases your odds and you know that's one of the secrets to my success so hopefully you learn from these seven lessons i will be in the chat room bright and early tomorrow we've got a bunch of plays and i will see you guys uh tomorrow but have a great sunday night and happy holidays from my family to you and yours thanks